All right. Let me turn you around here. I got my coffee. It's early Saturday morning. What we're going to be working on is putting hinges on this tailgate. Um, I don't think I'll get all this done this weekend. I need this truck for Monday. And if I dismantle this past the point of... Uh, I don't know how to describe what I'm thinking. If I dismantle or make this past the point that I can't finish in the time of now to, till Monday, then that's a problem for me. But if I just do the top hint two hinges now and then, you know, do the work that I have to do next week, maybe then I can do the bottom hinge and the truck portion um, next week. Um, I don't have multiple trucks. Um, I used to, but the registration and insurance fees are just brutal. So I have to work around this one truck, which normally, I mean, it's not a problem, you know. Uh, but when you start taking apart your one tool, it's like a plumber who has one monkey wrench and he breaks it, you know. So I got this plate to cut pieces off of. But the problem is, is it's half inch. And I was thinking of using this to brace up the um, hinges. Um, the reason I got half inch, and I'll be perfectly honest with you, it's a money thing. Now you might be thinking half inch, that probably costs a lot. Well, no, because when they cut steel in the steel yard, whatever falls off the end of the bandsaw onto the floor, they call it a drop, and they put it in the scrap bin. This piece was $39. I wanted 3 8 I didn't want to go this thick. I wanted 3 8 They didn't have any 3 8 in their drop. So I would have had to have bought a whole sheet. Just to give you some figures, um, my floor in my dump body is one full sheet. It's quarter inch, and it was $1,200. Okay, so you can only imagine what a 3 8 plate full sheet would cost um so you either buy the drop or you own you even if you have them cut a piece off of uh a long you know like a long uh piece or whatever you still own that whole piece uh, and these are the pieces that people choose to leave whenever i buy a full sheet of something and have them cut it to size i take the drops with me a lot of people don't um so i got this piece just because the numbers worked out. Um, then I got this, because I have this idea of the back tower. It's a piece of seven eighths. So I was thinking the back tower where the, um, uh, what do you call that thing? Where the, on, on the dump body. Uh, let me show you real quick. All right. Now, when I say tower, this is what I'm calling the tower box. I don't know its technical term. Let's just call it a tower because that's what... It, so, I would have to take this slurry lock off of it and then put a hinge here. And I want to put a pin in because I want to... I've used so many barn doors over the years and air tailgates and everything. But the best one I've used was on a red Mack dump trailer. Um, the guy that has the stump dump that we go into, Nick. Um, the trailer that I used with him was the best setup, the Mac dump trailer setup. Um, that pin, that pin system, the barn door system, that to me was the best. And then it was broken when I went to work there. I welded it, I changed a couple things on it and made it even better. The guy um, who's using it now tells me he still loves it, it's the best one that he's used. So we're gonna copy that. Now that piece of 7 8 steel, I want to go up inside, uh, I can do it from in here, put it up inside here, in, in line with that pin, so when the barn door swings open and puts pressure, on here we don't stuff this in you know it'll be in line with that so it'll basically you know this 
when I'm done, you'll have a burn mark in this paint from me welding on the inside, probably just the bottom. I won't be able to get in the top, but there'll be a burn mark in the paint all the way around. And that will make this solid, you know? Think of it in terms of like if you had a, if you had a soda can and you crushed it with your hand when the can's empty, okay? But now if you put like uh, water in it and froze it and it was solid on the inside, the can is still the same material. The, okay, this is, but you can't crush it because it's, it's full inside. That's the best analogy that I could come up with. All right, let's get back to it. I'm gonna get a tape measure before I knock those off, measure the distance from there to there inside because I wanna make sure I put it back exact so those fit in the um, ears. Those ears fit in the other ears on the dump body because we're not changing them. It's 85 and a half at the top of the ear, and it's 85 and 5 eighths at the bottom. So, the top of the ear is where the pin goes through, so I'm thinking maybe we should, um, we should do 85 and a half, because it makes sense that they would do an even 85 and a half. Um, the manufacturer in my mind. I mean, I may be wrong uh, Plus when you cut the weld I should have measured it first when you cut the weld But there is a tiny bit of play in the ears. That's just a rough ballpark So we're gonna go with 85 and a half <laughs> So I think now what I have to do is I have to cut out a, a plug and put in there. So I need to charge this GoPro. Let me um, clean up all this metal. So like I have to sand that nice because we're going to make a hinge out of that um, because this is not worn in the pin um, that I replaced when I built the body um, on the truck. The pin, it was custom um custom made to fit that real real tight so everything's perfect 
So I want to save this ear and we'll put, build our hinge out here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge up the camera. Let me um, clean all this down. Uh, I'm going to knock off that one. I'm going to cut two plug plates. I'm going to plug this up. Uh, clean this down, plug this up, clean these off, and then I'll turn the camera back on and we will start with fresh material going going forward. Uh, okay. Okay, so I cut the ears off. Um, and then I had to weld some beads over them because, and then grind them back down. Then the welder started acting weird. Bandsaw is done, I'll show you that in a minute. It's, it shuts off automatically. Um, in order to not take too, too much meat out of the tailgate, you can see I left. I ended up cutting more into this meat because why not? This one's thick as heck. Um, so what I gotta do now is I cut two squares and I welded them in there. I have to clean this down. Then my plan is I'm cutting, I'm basically gonna put, um, why did I just go blank on this? Uh, I'll show you. I'm, I get that round stuff, stock, and it's nine inches from the top of the hinge to the bo total bottom. I'm not sure how this is gonna work because look at this shape. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I might end up welding that in or we might just end up with smaller hinge. I, I don't know yet, you know. I'm just I'm just kind of winging it. Let me um let me keep cutting stuff and fitting stuff and see what I come up with. I'm, I'm maybe I'll got to shorten it up or do something different. This is why I bought extra cuz I told the guy I says I'm probably going to screw up at some point. Can you just give me extra? He goes, "Well, what do you need exactly?" I'm like, "Just give me extra, dude. I'm going to screw this up." And, you know, because there's no plans. I'm just winging it. All right. I'll check back in after I get this stuff cut. All right, so I changed my mind. I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom where it tapers. This is six inches. So I'm going to do two, four, six. So I'm going to do three two-inch tubes. Um... I cut those three inches, but it ends up down here, and then I'd have to uh, fill that too much. You see the see the gap? I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not necessary either. I've been pouring oil on this because for some reason the oil thing, I don't know if the pump went crap, it's not working. So I just poured some oil on by hand, but... I set it slow so you get a nicer cut, and it's, uh, I changed the blade to an 18, I think it's 17 or 18 tooth per inch, versus my other one, so it does very fine shavings. Alright, let me get these cut, and then I'll check back. See, that's what I was saying, that's what I said to you. Uh, yeah, I don't know, that's confusing. I just want to drill out all these hints. What's going on here? This thing in hammer drill or just drill? Come on, I don't want to buy another tool. Why is this thing doing that? That sucks. I checked it at the hardware store. I don't think so. Mm. Either that or I'm just not strong enough to screw this in correctly. Oh no, it's because this die is stripped. What size is it? 5 16 
looks solid. Does it work? Yeah, beautiful. Nice. It's the first thing that's gone right today. I completely guessed on the tap. <laughs> Imagine. Okay. Oh, no, 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 you're not even in the hole. You're not even in the hole. I have a hard time getting it in the hole. All right, guys. I am classifying this as a fail. I think the problem is I let the kid at the steel place talk me into hot rolled, um, hot roll. I normally get cold roll and it seems to be a little cleaner and it doesn't have all that mill scale. And I think I pounded all that mill scale in here and jammed it up. Plus it seems like it has like a seam here that sticks up higher. I can feel it. It's not perfectly round. I probably should have not let him talk me into it because I was kind of on the fence about it. You can see the line, the seam. I mean, I don't know. I The pin's cooled down a bit. Maybe I'll give it another whack. If not, I have a plan. I'll show you. Might toss this out. This is pretty much why I got extra stuff. All right. You see all that stuff on the pin? That's all mill scale because this was um, he called hot roll. Uh, means it come it comes out with all this mill scale on it normally i get pin material that doesn't as cold roll it and it seems cleaner my mistake was i didn't clean this and i think a bunch of this mill scale bound up in the thing um and the other thing too is i'm gonna hone out the inside because there's burrs from drilling the grease fitting hole that's another mistake that I did. So those are two mistakes I just made. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, rectify. <laughs> I guess that's the word. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix my mistakes. All right, I cleaned all the mill scale off of this pin because I, I, I really think it was binding up in that other one. This is what I got extra material for is because I, I don't know. When I was talking to the kid and I said, hey man, that thing doesn't really fit in there. I need it to fit in there. He said, oh, it will. You just got to pound it in. I said, you better give me four feet of this stuff. So I got, I got extra rod. So I cut a new six inch piece. I said, you better give me some extra rod because I'm going to mess this up. I've done this before. The fact that I have to do this is really annoying because the last time I got steel from there, they matched it up perfect, so I don't know. I can't win. Almost.
I keep falling off the side because my arm's tired. I've done this before, but you gotta keep moving fast. I don't have a lathe. A proper way would put this in a lathe and just take it down. Here's the thing. This is only good for this application. You cannot do that if you needed something with a seal to ride up and down this thing, you know, um, and if it was high speed, constant spinning. But realistically, this is probably only gonna spin, you know, it's probably only gonna turn like this much and back. And, you know, all it is is I, clean, I cleaned up the pin best I could. It's probably a little bit right there. So... <clears throat> now, let's turn. See the rust? Uh, where's the scratch mark? They usually make a scratch mark. Right around there. Right around there. So the reason I've had to do this is because... You know, I mean, that's pretty, pretty tight, you know what I mean? <laughs> but the problem is, is, he gave me the wrong pin material, and it was very far from where I live. And I don't want to go back. So I know what I'm doing is kind of, kind of rednecky ghetto, whatever you want to call it. But, like I said, guys, I'm working with the tools I have and the supplier I have and everything. I, um... I know there's some really, really good professional looking stuff out on YouTube and, you know, that guys are really, really, like, super good at it and everything, but they also have the tools. It's like when I was younger and my dad and I, we used to watch Bob Vila, remember him? And my dad would say, yeah, I could do that too if I had all the tools. In other words, if I had a lathe, which I, we used to, but it, we, you know, it broke. I could turn this down perfectly even. It would have taken me no time. I probably could have been sipping something for a drink, you know, while the thing was sitting in a lathe automatically doing it. But I don't. So it is what it is, is what I'm trying to say. Don't look at me and be like, eh, eh, eh. You got to look at, I'm just working with what I got. Let me clean this up more. I want to, I got to make another one of these because I had to abandon that one. And, um, Yeah. I'm using the sand disc because we only want to take off a tiny, tiny little bit. Now I'm going to switch to the wire wheel to kind of polish it a little bit. wish he had the correct stuff at the steel yard you know the real stuff but this isn't like something that spins constant like this you'd probably want that perfect this is a barn door it's probably gonna you know spin a quarter of the way in back so and we're gonna grease the crap out of it and then it'll just wear into I gotta make another one of these it's getting kind of laid out um, I think my food just showed up, and I'm going to make another one of these, and then I'm going to check back with you guys tomorrow. I'm going to probably work a little late, late cleaning up the edge of the tailgate, though. i got to lift this tailgate back up. Um, I made this hinge. Today I'm going to put... I'm going to clean up this plate. I cut it in the dark last night. But I think that plate is going to go like right here. I'm thinking I'm going to put this plate 
under the grease fitting i'm gonna try to i mean if i have to put new grease fittings in after i have a whole box of them i'm gonna put that tailgate back on the truck i just primed it you know just for last night in case we got some moisture or something i got those two holes closed up welded up you know as flat as i'm i could because that plate is going to come off the hinge and weld to here on a, on a 90 like this so and then i'm gonna have to cut that slurry lock off and do a different one but i had it's sunday it got really late and i was messing with my welder like most of the day i i had problems with with the new welder getting it set up I don't, I don't know what happened, but. Huh? He is, yo, I'm gonna do you some welding so he can't hang out with me. I don't want him getting burnt or uh, welding flash. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go get changed. Uh, it's like 9.30, I guess I can make some noise now. See, that's not supposed to sit on the bottom of that ear. It's supposed to be in there is where I want it. You gotta get this perfect before you go and do anything. So I'm gonna cut a couple shims. You know what I'm saying? If this was sitting in here. I don't know why this rod's on here. I, I know why it's on there. But it was on here when I got the tailgate. Like, you know, the tailgate, I didn't build the tailgate. Um, when I built the body, I got the tailgate and this linkage um, off the old body that I robbed for parts. And what it is is guys do this rod thing when they don't understand or are too lazy to go under and adjust the linkage. Problem is, it worked so good that I didn't want to change it anyways, so I just left it. But um, I am going to redo the linkage. It's just, it's hard to do this stuff and work the truck at the same time. Maybe some washers. Uh. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. I just wish they weren't lock washers. <laughs> That's all I got. I'll do the other side. Because you don't want it to come down and rub on the bottom. I'll do the other side. Then I'll check the side to side clearance. And then I'll tighten up the... the um, I'll tighten up the slurry or gate locks. Whatever you want to call them. Here we call them slurry locks. make sure up top that that ear is flat where it goes into that one you know uh, I think we got it there I don't know what's up with here I think the truck part might be a little uh, I might have chopped in the tailgate a hair trying to get it off But as long as the, I remember, as long as the slurry locks pull straight in, uh, we are good. Because that's how this gate normally sits. All the linkage might be, it's 
just this distance in here. So I took the torch and we didn't like these shoot um, as asphalt shoots handles or some people call them coal shoots. I mean, they're they're asphalt shoots. That's what they're used for. Um, I've never seen anybody use them for coal, but I'm probably wrong. I mean, I don't live in coal country, so I don't know. Anyways, uh, and then I made that whole box system. For now, I have it pinned um permanently till i make the rod that's going to come down um to a lever here that will pull the pin down and then the gate will swing that way um i just have to clean up that last weld i did along the bottom it was kind of a booger weld uh the other thing too is i'm having i don't know i don't want to make excuses that's just a crappy weld there is no excuse um but I, get, I, get, I don't know if I keep bumping the helmet. I can't see anything or if I'm going blind. I don't know what the deal is. A couple times I caught myself wearing sunglasses. I forgot that my sunglasses were on. Right there. So I kind of like was going like this. Okay, so I had already started making this one. And I totally fouled it up. Um, and I had to cut it. I, I had to cut it off. You can see... I was planning on ha having this hinge part that I made straight off of the back of that pin. The only pro, I mean the hinge, the only problem is I forgot it needs to be offset. What, let me explain what I'm trying to say here. If he'll, if he'll come around this side. And I am drinking my coffee. I had to take a break. I'm, I'm dying. It's like 4 o'clock on Sunday. I had that thing here. That pin. And that's totally incorrect. You have to build it out. And the, the pivot point has to be outside. If you stand back here, you can see it. Okay, so I had that welded onto here. And what would have happened, and I overlooked it. Um, I was on the phone, again, dealing with business stuff. And I just started welding and without much, didn't put much thought to it. And then when I put this on the truck, I went, I, right away it dawned on me, like, oh crap. Because what will happen is this tailgate will pivot around and it will hit here. So it'll be like this, then it'll hit here and bound up, bind up here. You actually have to have it come out so the pivot point is past the bed. So the bed, the, the tailgate will come all the way around and be in the stowed position when you're dumping. So you, it'll fold flat against the side of the body. Um, some people chain them, some people pin them. But the pin has to be outside the body. It can't be in here, or, you know, if that makes sense. So my dad had this really good idea. Uh, he, he stopped by to check out what I was doing and said, I was telling him I was having a hard time getting these pins to fit in through here. And he said, why didn't they just fit, get you one that fit? And I said, well, I don't know, because they said they were all out and whatever. So he said, how are you getting them to fit? And I said, well, I was taking the grinder. And he goes, that's not good. It's not, that's not going to be a good, that's not good to take the grinder and go back and forth. And I'm like, well, whatever. I don't have any other ideas. And he said, why don't you weld a bolt on the end of it and I'll take it home, put it in my drill press with this sandpaper I have with a glove on and squeeze it. It is still, it is still warm. I got to build hinges. I think there's going to be two, four, six, eight. So there'll be, uh, two, four, six, eight. So there'll be four of those two inch rings here. Um, roughly and then they actually they're not going to be on here i got a weld steel plate coming out 
to about here and then and then go from there so okay so this is my cardboard cutout that i made um template because i for the top hinge um i made that because i didn't want to keep slicing and dicing the steel and then um i used that as a template also ring cut around that and it's real early in the morning. Uh, I actually just dumped the water out of the truck. Let me get the torches and start cutting that because that's not super loud. We can do that early. I just clean it up with the grinder and make another one uh before i do any more i should probably i should probably tell you i i bet there's somebody out there that's like dude why don't you just buy the hinges and barn door hinge kit and weld it on well for this size um tailgate and its weight you know it's kind of it's kind of a heavy duty tailgate i actually went to a place that builds dump bodies uh, like a truck place and the cheapest one that they could do was twelve hundred dollars and You had to do a lot of work um, I would have had to like cut into this and Put this rod through the thing and like I looked at it and I have the piece of paper in the house Maybe at the end of the video. Maybe I'll dig that piece of paper out and show you you had to do all kinds of stuff. You had to, there was just a crap load of moving parts and they wanted $1,200 for it. And I didn't like it cause it stuck off the, um, it stuck off, the hinge stuck off the passenger side, you know, like a lot. And I just don't want to catch that on trees or, you know, stuff hanging off. Uh, so like I said, you know, I, I bet someone's thinking out there, man, do you just, hey, listen, I was thinking it too. I checked with two two different places and then before I went to the dump body place. One per, one place won like two grand, you know? I think all said and done, I'll probably be into it. I think the steel for me to buy all the steel from the steel place was 300 bucks. So as long as I don't have any major hiccups. So let me just throw that in there because I know I forgot to mention that too. Here's the tricky part, cause it's all gotta be squared, but I have to shim the back side of the half inch steel up a little bit. Um, 
with an even piece. I'm thinking this is how we're gonna do it. Like so. I might clean this magnet off and use the magnet to square it with the plate. The, the rod is sitting on a plate. All right, let me tack this one. Then we gotta do some measurements and we gotta tack that one. I think I need to tack this one first. All right, I haven't been filming a lot of this project because the GoPro uh, gets super hot and then uh, it just shuts off but um, I don't know where I left off so <clears throat> what I'm doing now is I'll show you I'm gonna climb up here I built this hinge I'm gonna cut this off because it's no I don't want this sharp corner and that sharp corner I have tried this out in the swing gate mode so you can see the seam so this whole section here and the grease fitting will be kind of protected in here I gotta do one more piece across here but I have to round out this piece then it sits in there then round out to there and then <clears throat> this piece I don't know if you guys can see in there. I cut it out. So, just a slot for the grease fitting. So, if the grease fitting comes back around, plus it'll keep dirt and stuff out of there. So, I have it so this is welded to the tailgate. This is a stiffener. Um,. So that's going to come across the next one there. And they're, they're just a couple of stiffeners. I don't know if I'm going to box it in. I'm probably not going to. I don't, I don't think it's necessary. I might just trim this down a little bit. I did two inches because I wasn't sure, you know. You, you really, this whole tailgate has to swing on this. So you really need to have it kind of stiff. But this stays where it is. Uh, I welded the pin in there which then I had to, <clears throat> after I welded it, I greased it. It was so tight because it was hot, it wouldn't move, um, which made me kind of nervous. So I put a pipe wrench on it and the hose cool to cool the pin down with the garden hose. And I got it to go again but it's just because it was um it was super hot i probably didn't need to put the wrench on it but whatever um and here's where i forgot to turn the gas on so we'll have to touch that weld up um i'm getting getting slowly getting used to the new welder and the digital um gauges i'm using the chart inside the machine i gotta clean all this up after and paint it because I have to go to work. I have to go to work later today. Oh, that was interesting. Interestingly scary. Uh, don't do this at home. Only an idiot would stand at the top of a ladder with a grinder. I gotta cut this piece down to like, uh, right there is my mark. 
you adjust this by turning this knob and that adjusts the speed but I like to go slow so you get a clean clean cut uh, back on the ladder I hate ladders but whatever all right that one was a good one now I gotta cut the angle okay now I think this angle is still set up. These things are great because you can lock, lock the thing into place. So if I just match that line up and keep this inner part square, that should be it. Yeah, it looks about right. Alright, I got the torch out. I'm trying to gouge off this... Um, slurry lock because this is where the hinge has to go well the, the the bottom pin thing i haven't decided what i'm gonna make yet um but for now i'm just gonna cut this off and unfortunately i mean i cut it off there's the piece over there the top piece and the bottom piece all right i don't know how much of this i'll get before the camera died uh dies um my tripod's not tall enough to get close, plus it's gonna be a lot of burning. I'm just, I welded that too damn good. And I'm having to burn it off in little pieces. See how I'm just trying to get the weld? You know, just gouge out the weld and not get into the actual side of the truck. Then I'll smooth grind, grind down that. It's been a, it's been like what two weeks, week or two. What do you think? Week or two. Two weeks. And it's supposed to be how much? Well, it's 80 right now, and it's going to be 100 today. All right. Well, you guys hear that? And my stupid stupid ass decided to weld because I have a lot of jobs coming up but I don't have a lot of time so I have a lot of work but it's like all barn door like we just went and did a job and how long did it take us to get that stuff out from under the gate what the wood chips no no that's the last stuff we dumped at the stump dump over at Nick's oh, yeah, like it was like 20 minutes of messing with stuff to get it out from under the gate. But anyways. This is what I got going on. I'm, you know, but trying to line it up. Trying to line that top. I clamped a straight edge. You can see it. To here. And I just put like a tack weld there. And then, um... I, I don't know. I gotta make some sort of stuff after to pretty it up. But for now, I... I I just want to go for functionality. I don't really like the way it looks. You can see the piece I cut in half because I wanted when the pin goes in there, I wanted the pin to cup in there perfect. I wasn't trying to bend a piece to make it fit. Then I heated up and bent two, two pieces like that. These ones here, you know, just to like catch it aligned. Uh, as it goes in I'm sorry I can't film as I'm doing things but this GoPro literally remember yesterday you were like why is this thing so hot no that that was the hottest it's ever been I touched the rim around like the lens and it burnt my finger yeah it's crazy um, and then they usually shut off so what I'll do is that wasn't even from it sitting in the Sun that was just from like a little bit of Sun and it just running yeah it's it's weird I don't know like I said, it's August, you know, not making excuses or anything. We're just, we don't understand it. We're puzzled. Um, we're not camera guys. We're not camera guys, no. We're um, dirt jerks. Dirt dummies. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we'll just periodically check in at the progress. Center of that pin is six and a half from the side of the tailgate. So in order to do this, I got the dummy pin mocked up. And six and a half to the center of that pin give or take when i weld it it's going to pull one direction or the other 
Um, but I don't know because it's, it's not real cold out. The metal's hot, so we probably won't get any warping. Um, it's what did we say it is today. It's supposed to be like over a hundred. A hundred, yeah. You think the chainsaw guys from the cult will want me to warm up the you saw today? To, dude, you have to warm it up. Yeah, you have to warm up the you have saw. To warm it up. Otherwise, they'll come and they'll come and confiscate your chainsaws. Yeah. The Ministry of Chainsaws. The Ministry of Chainsaws. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just like picture like um. What is that? What is that dude? What's the wizard there? The dark, Ministry of Dark Arts or some what, Snape? Snape. Professor <laughs> Snape will come take your chainsaw away if you don't warm it up. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Oh my God. Who do you think the professor? The, who the the chainsaw cult? You, minister of the Minister of the Chainsaw Cult is. Who knows? Oh. You, I think they'll put like a like a like that uh, Dumbledore wig on Buck and Billy Ray, <laughs> and they'll send that Buck and funny. Billy Ray. Can you imagine Buck and Billy Ray's like, "Hey, friend, I'm here. To, it's the Drifter. I'm here to confiscate your chainsaw. I got too many complaints from YouTube cult that you're not warming it up. Hand it over so I can put it in my collection." <laughs> yeah. He's awesome though. I love Buck and Billy Ray. He is wicked cool. Anyways, moving on now. All right, guys, I've been out here all day in like 90 degree weather, 90% humidity, it's terrible. Um, this is kind of like what I came up with. I mean, I kind of smooth, I could have left that weld. It was actually kind of pretty, unlike me, but uh, that one wasn't bad either. Um, so I took the sanding disc and smoothed that out. Make sure the rod fits in there perfect. Um, I left this all open. I didn't put like a plate on here or anything. The way dirt will fall through. My advice to anyone is, if you know somebody with a CNC machine or a plasma table, have them cut all this stuff out for you because coming up with my own pattern, just kind of winging it. Look at all the pieces I've got, like cut off scraps and I mean, it's not a big deal because I like doing this stuff. I enjoy it, but uh, right about there. It's really hard to cut angles and shapes in a saw that's meant to just go up and down. So like I'm, and I got no power for the lights in here. So it's, it's kind of dark too. Plus, it's getting dark out, but it's kind of hard to, you know, cut, uh, cut out shapes and things. So what I like to do is match the two pieces up and then clamp them together with a pair of vice grips. And then the only problem is like, you'll see how the blade's on an angle, like it doesn't cut straight. So this one here will be past the line to get that one on the line. And that's okay, because I'm gonna weld the corner in anyway, so. Let's, uh, I'll show you what I mean. And then you just turn this little wheel to adjust the speed in which it comes down. So like right there, I squeeze the wheel tight. And then like, I'll slowly crack it. The oil's messy, but it really does save on the blades. And she starts to grab slow. This is a Lennox bandsaw blade that I ordered online because I kept breaking the Harbor Freight blades because they're only um, they're only half inch. This is three quarters tall. I'd love to have one an inch tall, but this machine's not meant for it. Um, yeah. Then I just unclamp it and watch it fall out. Now. Here's the part that I gotta 
match these back up. Sometimes you have to, you gotta stop and clean all the shavings out of this area. Otherwise, things don't sit flat. It's very important to make sure they're sitting flat. So you want to clean all that off. These, these are, these are pretty good. But um, trying to do this without wrecking my camera with oil. So I'm gonna use my other hand with the glove. Now I I know what somebody's gonna say. Like you, you could get the liquid stuff and you know blah blah. This is like cutting oil. You know like plumbers cutting oil. Like I forget where I got it from. And and I I know you know there's gonna be somebody out there who's like a, a professional and everything. But you gotta remember. I've been using cutting oil since I was a kid with my dad and that's why I'm not going to change because sometimes clamp this down sometimes it's cool to just keep doing what the heck you were doing you know what I mean I got a friend that doesn't even use anything he doesn't like the he doesn't like any of the material to be wet and anything he just does it dry and I'm like what do you do about your blades he's like I just keep buying new ones man Okay. In other words, to each his own. You know, we all got different ways of doing stuff. The internet seems to be very bossy. I actually don't really care for, lately, for social media and the internet. It's actually... I started a TikTok page and the hatred on there is unbelievable. So look at we got a perfect 90 degree angle so here's the thing yeah you might do it like this i might do it like that but at the end it doesn't matter as long as it gets done okay as long as you get it done get the job done okay it's very important to get all this oil off though before you start welding otherwise you start getting little pinholes and pops and everything all right guys i just had my son help me put a block of wood in there so i can get in here to weld it and then it wasn't welding right so i took the torch and i burned all the paint off then i took you know kind of close then i took the wire wheel and i wire wheeled it after so maybe i can get a better looking bead but it ain't i i don't know i, I like really pretty beads but they really honestly don't matter once i get this all like re-welded i'm gonna go over the beads so they're nice and strong and and uh, I, I want them to be strong i don't want stuff to rip off and then um i'm gonna do a little bit of grinding clean up you know i have one spot where the wind the wind really started blowing i stopped but you know in the tail end of it right there you know left a little booger i'll probably clean that booger off um this is gonna be a really long video, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All your building videos are? I actually can't stand doing building videos anymore. I like the quick, like, dirt ones, where like, we're just like, all right, we're gonna push some dirt. Yeah, but Music the building time. ones are cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then it ends, and then we're like, okay, check back. Yeah, but this stuff's cool, so you gotta show it off. I know. Everybody likes trucks, and everybody likes... Building in processes. Well, here's the thing, right? It's like, so we do like dirt stuff on this channel, but how many people have like, you know, little projects they want to weld on? Like fabricating and welding is like, speaks to like everybody, I think. Yeah. That one came out good. But um, the truck that I used to drive, one of them, it was actually a Mack 10 wheeler. Um, the guy actually had two of them. They were they were kind of twins. One was an RD, but one was a Granite. Yes, I have a lot of experience driving Max. That used to be all that was around here back in the day. But the pin system was, it just worked great. You just stuck the bolt in there, swung the gate open. He had a, a nut on it. I'm wondering maybe I'll come through this side. I've had to trim some stuff. I, uh, I trimmed this down. I got to clean that with a grinder, clean off. I had that all the way over here. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I was going to re-drill this hole and straighten that bolt out because it's not 100%. Uh, you know, this, it's like a slight hair. I don't think I'm going to bother, to be honest with you. I mean, 
Once I paint everything black, clean everything up, paint it black, yeah, I'm the only one that's gonna notice it. Um, and I'm probably gonna put a pin in there anyways. Or maybe even a bigger bolt. I haven't decided yet. But here's, um, still gotta clean up around there and do some stuff. I think I'm gonna make a holder. So you pull the pin out and put it in here. Um, cause I got room in there to hold it and then, and I might get a different style pin, but I ended up having to put a shim in here because I'm, so I made a shim because the tailgate, when I opened it, sagged this much, an eighth. So roughly about an eighth because this was sliding that way. Now I think the reason being is, is because I don't know what kind of material this is. This pin is really smooth. And then the other problem I have is I totally forgot that one time I was taking a tailgate off by myself. And I was waiting on my son to help me but I was like super impatient. So I just started taking it off and I pounded the pins out. And I had the chain, I had the tailgate dangling from the chain. Yeah, you like my umbrella? That's, it's just a two wheel dolly umbrella zip tied. Well, anyways, ADD, pay attention, Steve. Um, I had the tailgate dangling from a chain. When I took it out, I actually got crooked and I twisted this ear. So, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna take the cutoff wheel and I'm gonna grind that weld. Then I'm gonna re clamp all this together real tight and then re weld this. Um, <clears throat> with the pin in, I'm just gonna cut along here and then squeeze this so this all becomes tight. Um, and then I, I did try it with this, with this shim and it, uh, it, it works perfect. Alright, it's getting late, I'm supposed to work tomorrow. So here's, um, I made this piece, uh, um, scrap thing that I had. And then this handle, but here's the tricky part that has always got me every time I've built one of these. How much throw is needed to pull the pin down? You know what I mean? And this, this pin's super stiff. I'm gonna have to sandpaper it more because I've had to beat the pin in and beat the pin out, which there's no way you're gonna pull on this little lever. And I really don't wanna make a bigger lever, to be honest with you, because they're gonna be sticking out or I don't know, man. You know, I don't know. I was, I was almost thinking of making the. I mean, I gotta stand on the ground to do this too. I mean, look at. I mean, what am I gonna do? Like, how much taller? You know, I'm standing on the ground right now. How much more of a lever? You know what I mean? So, I don't know. It's getting this linkage is always um. Getting the linkage has kind of, you know, just right has always, every time I've messed with one of these barn doors, it's always been something that you have to play with, you know, until you get it just right. I remember the place I worked at, I redid the tailgate um, linkage on my old boss's truck because I, I didn't like it. And even, even that, I was in the shop playing with it, which wasn't bad because he had a nice shop and I was getting paid by the hour and... and you know, but worst case scenario. See, the other thing too is I want to be able to put a pin through here to lock it. So I don't know. I'm thinking, and then I was like, oh, it'd be nice if it just sat down here because then it would stop the pin from, from falling out up there. But if I don't have enough throw, I guess if I measured, I got an idea. If we hold this like this, and we measure from the center of this hole to the center of this over here, take that distance. If it matches this distance, we're good because you only have to clear these two. You're supposed to stay in this one. You know, just drop through, clear this one, and stay in this one. If I could get that to do that, I would be really happy. So let's 
get off the ladder. And I'm I'm really tired. There's no excuse, Steve. Suck it up. Suck it up, buttercup. Ugh. At least it's cooler out today than it was previous days because um, it's been like crazy humidity. But I got a big job we're starting tomorrow. So that's four inches from that top one to the bottom of the next one. So. I can't. I'm going to put you on the top of the ladder. Don't fall off. So. Oh my god, it's perfect. Do you guys see that? I swear to god that was just pure dumb luck. I'm not that good. That's a Kenworth that I used to drive over there, the W9. Before that, um, I had that Pete, the red Pete, with the low bed for maybe three or four years. And that trailer right there, that red dump trailer, that's the barn door um, that I basically kind of like copied a little bit. Um, just because of its, its simplicity, I think that's the correct word, but oh, his new 61's here. So he's got two, two dozers. That's the new D61. That thing's a monster. Um, I really like that cat. I spent some time in that, quite a bit of time in that D6K. Uh, my favorite machine is here, the 160. It looks like they're picking rock. Uh, that 160 is the all-around perfect size machine, in my personal opinion. Um, and then this thing, he got this after I left, this 360. It's all set up for GPS, but I don't have any, I have zero time in that. I used to move the stacker and the screener around, but... Uh, As you can see, that stacker, you put that on a trailer and bring it into little neighborhoods, but we're not here for that. Um, I'm kind of getting off topic. I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna let my son get out and show you uh, the, the stump operation. Yep. this I already had it set up just a bolt I might come up with a fancier pin later but put a bolt through here with the nut you can do this at the beginning of your day if you're gonna be doing a lot of stumping I have not had the time to grind all of this and clean it all up and smooth it off and paint it but we don't care about that we're, we're interested in functionality I think that's the correct word make sure you're yeah we call them slurry locks. I've heard people call them turnbuckles. Make sure they're out of the way and in the down position. Then pull the pin, pull this down, find a place to put this so you don't lose it. I've been just throwing it in the chain like so. Take this chain. Now if you have a heavy gate, I don't care, I've used new trucks. If you have a heavy gate, when you pull it down, it's probably gonna sag a little bit. Now you come over here. Monday morning. Um, it's been sitting over the weekend. 
the reason why you want to pull on that gate is because I've seen the chain pop out sometimes you couldn't you can put another pin and another thing but this I've already used this been using this truck for a couple weeks and the chain is always as long as there's pressure pulling back on the chain and you don't cut your chain too short you want you want that chain to hang down you want the chain to hang a little bit for weight to keep it in there if you cut it up here you know then it could pop out all right watch out because we got some big ones Maybe. yeah i'm gonna go stand over here get a better angle Just like that, they're all out. Okay, I'm gonna end up putting a spill plate back on this also, but that'll be like another thing. I probably won't film it. I have a ton of stuff to do to this body still before I paint it. So you come over here, push a little bit, and then take the hook off, chain. Then what's nice is, you have this chain to pull on, and then you gotta come around quick. Remember we saved this right here so we didn't lose it? Take that out. Line the hole up. And we're done. You can hit the button in the cab. I don't know if I'm strong enough to lift this. I'm kind of short. But once you take this out, let me see if I can. It's back to a regular tailgate now. So guys, I hope you enjoyed listening to me stutter and ramble about building this thing. Sometimes my brain goes a lot faster than my mouth can keep up. Um, I am gonna paint it and everything. Uh, I just wanted to get it going. Maybe when work slows down in the winter, I could do a real nice job of sanding it and painting it. Yeah, all right, that's gonna do it for this one. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. I'm sure it'll be something, something different.